Kelly, the co-host of From the Stump. And this is Trevor, and we have the pleasure of chatting with him today. And today I would like to ask about water. water. Not just about when we use it and how much we use of it, but we're moving into winter. Let's talk about water and the tank itself. The whole, the whole, the, whole, the, whole, the whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay, so water. So this probably won't be really long. Pretty simple topic, you yeah. would think. But yeah. there's actually more to talk about than just what is it. So when do we use it? We always use it. Always. Always. Except, mm -hmm. except the only time I do kind of bend on that is cutting oak. Okay. I don't know the science behind it. I know it's got something to do with the tannites or whatever's in there, but it cuts better dry. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that aside, that's just okay. a tip, guys. Um, but as a rule, water always, water always, water always, because the water's not there to lubricate the cut so much as it is to cool the blade. Okay. That blade's hot, wicked hot. And heat is what makes blades, uh, blades break and come apart. Okay. So you got to try and cool it down and you need to put the water on it. I know I talk to guys all the time. They're like, Oh, somebody said if you run too much water, it's going to make the blade come off. No way. Never heard that. I just don't believe that. I've never had it happen to me. Um, so this tank's empty, mm -hmm. right? Nothing in there. She's, she's dry. And the reason for that is because I knew it was going to freeze because we're getting into that time of year and I opened it up and let it drain. Nice. Because if you don't, yeah. you're going to come back. That valve's going to jack open. It's going to you just wreck the valve. But I mean, why go there if you don't have to? Mm -hmm. So what are we going to run? Washer fluid. <laughs> she okay. washer fluid. So just switch to washer fluid, guys. It's the easiest thing to do. Make sure it's the minus. Um, can, you, can you fill that up? Yeah. I'll close that so it doesn't start oh, pouring yeah, out you. all over the place. I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, you want to switch to washer fluid, guys. Uh, nice and simple. Um, but the thing is, it's costing you money, right? You're paying for it. So you really do want to set the flow, you know, at whatever's necessary and really not that much more. Like full? Like, I'll fill it up. Yeah. 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 That's good enough. Yeah. 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 And we're live. Okay. Okay. I'll put this back on. Super simple. Okay. Doesn't matter the color or anything like that. No, I don't. As long as it's got some sort of, you know, decent freeze point in it. Okay. Some guys even take that and cut it with water. Oh, okay. Really, whatever. As long as you put it in there so it can't freeze. Right. If you start fooling around with cutting it, though, I promise it'll it'll crystallize. In right. There. And that doesn't affect the wood. No. At all? No, it doesn't show up in the wood. I've okay. never seen it stain the wood. Like, the, so yeah, that's a good point. I get asked that. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, that can be as purple or as green or as blue as you want, and it doesn't seem to show up in the wood. So Excellent. It just evaporates or blows out of there. I don't know. Now, would you add still soap if you were cutting something sticky? You can. You yeah. can. Okay. It, not nearly as much. Right. It'll it'll gel. It'll congeal on you. Okay. Um, and always do it in, in here before you dump it in, mm -hmm. and then shake, shake it to death. Just shake it to death. <laughs> um, so it mixes in as good as possible. Right. right. So awesome. That's the big thing to do with that. Now, drip rate. Um, bring this back. I don't know if this is going to show up very well or not. Open them. Got to open them wide up just to get the line full. Once the line's full, there we go. So now we can play with. It's kind of hard for me to show, I guess, from that angle. Can you see, Daniel? If you're looking right where the water's dripping on the blade there. He's coming. There we go. No, no, stop again. See that? See that steady drip, 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 drip. You see that little, that little. Can you see that flashing almost there where the water's coming in? That's what I run at. Okay. Now what you'll see is I'm gonna stir at this. It changes how fast it drips when it's running. So that's where 
dry run and this would be considered too much to me. I'm going to do it again here. Watch this. Okay, so if you see that, guys, um, you see it spraying and blowing all over the place? There's no need for that. It does not right. have to be, there doesn't have to be that much coming out of it. It just needs to be a nice steady drip. Right. Um, to cool the blade. Uh, if you do have something in there to help lubricate the blade, it, and again, you, you know what, really, it's not so much that you're lubricating the blade. The agent that you're putting in there is helping wash the pitch off the blade. Exactly. And that, in turn, makes it run better because there's no pitch buildup. Exactly. So it's not really lubricating the blade. I mean, we say that. We but, say it, but, but that's not, because it's not, it's not allowing really. it you're to... You're cooling yeah. it and you're cleaning it. Those nice. are the two things that are going on. So, awesome. Um, nice simple one for you. Nice short one, guys. I hope that helps you out uh, with what to run and how much to run. Um, have a great day. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, Trevor. Hey, everybody. Trev here from Norwood Sawmills. I know you've all heard me talk and different videos in the past about using this right here to make sure that you're getting a nice plumb side before you make that 90 degree cut. Okay, and what I mean by that is, I'm just going to move this back a little bit, is you're checking this, you know that your bed is level, so you're checking that cut to make sure that it's plumb so that you can get this nice 90 degree angle right here, okay? What I haven't really talked about is I often use a speed square as well okay if I think my eye might not be telling me what I'm looking for or I'm second-guessing myself a little bit and I'll show you how I do that so what I do or what I did is just one of those plastic speed squares I think most of us probably have one I just got a piece of uh, sticky magnetic tape and I've put it on the back side here and I keep it around the sawmill because what I do if I'm second guessing myself, is I stick it on the bottom of the blade like that and I bring it ahead to my cut and I look at it compared to the square, okay? It's a really handy tool. Um, you know, as you get cutting more, you probably won't use it a lot, but there are times where you still get tired and you're second guessing yourself. This just gives you a sure indicator that 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 second cut, where it's really critical, I got a square piece on here, so you know it's not super fair to kind of use that. But if I had a round log and that first cut that you made was just coming up to that 90 degree position, that's where this starts to come in handy. Okay, so if you're not using, you know, a torpedo level or something like that, maybe just put a piece of uh, magnetic tape on your speed square, keep it around the sawmill might help you get some better results. Thanks a lot.